you've created an exposure of some sort. Somebody was reviewing something, attended something, looked at something, and now you need to follow up. Follow up is simply doing what you said you'd do. You're going to go from exposure to exposure to exposure to exposure. That's your business, going from exposure to exposure, understanding that it will take an average of four to six exposures for a prospect to make a decision. On average, four to six. For everyone that takes one exposure, that means you're going to have some that take 12, 15 exposures. Some of the most powerful people in network marketing, they didn't join until they had 50 exposures. It took years before they finally pulled the trigger. That's the way it is. Four to six exposures. What professionals learn to do is condense those exposures for better results. So instead of one exposure a week, you know, they'll have somebody watch a DVD and then get on a three-way call later that day and sample the product, and that night they get on a conference call, and the next day they check out the website, and then after that they read the magazine, then they come to a little in-home meeting and they join. Whatever it happens to be, some little combination of those things. If we did a little survey in this room and you asked you what was your first exposure, second exposure, third exposure, every single one would be a slightly different path. Some of you were so ready. You know the worst thing that can happen to you? Here's the worst thing that can happen to you in Las Vegas. You go to the table and you win the first time you come here. Worst thing that could happen because now you're thinking you're going to win every time, right? So same thing is true in prospect. You go to that first person, you do one exposure, boom, they join. Or you joined after one exposure, so now you're expecting everybody else to do the same thing. And now when they don't, you're perpetually disappointed. What is the deal? Why don't they join? I don't understand. Let me tell you what to do after we've done exposure number one. We did exposure number one. We talked about that before. We did the eight steps. Invitation to review a tool. Okay? Or whatever it is we asked them to do. Take some action. Follow up is... You've set it up before you finish the first exposure. You set up when you're going to do it. You set up how you're going to do it, right? You got the phone number. You got the time. You got the day. They have their assignment that they created for themselves. And now you're going to call. So you call and you're going to say, what? Did you review the material? Did you watch the DVD? Did you listen to the CD? Did you read the magazine? Did you check out the link? Did you listen to the conference call? Did you do what we talked about. You're going to get one of two answers. If you do the eight-step process, the answers are going to be yes most of the time. But sometimes it's going to be no, right? And if you have terrible skills, it'll be no more than yes. So it's okay. We're going to get better and better and better. What some people do is they get irritated with their prospect. You said you'd watch that thing. For sure. <laughs> the heck, man. I, I can only work with people that I can respect, and if you don't do what you said you're going to do, I don't know if I can respect you. <laughs> they don't say that, but that's the tone sometimes. Get irritated. Come on, you said you're going to do it, now I'm calling you and wasting my time. Best way to respond is no problem. No problem. I understand life gets in the way. When do you think you could see it? For sure, for sure. <laughs> you think I'm kidding. I'm not kidding. Do I say two for sures? I do. When do you think you could see it? For sure, for sure. They laugh. And they'll give you another time. You know, they say, oh, I wanted to, but life got in the way, and the kids had this thing, and somebody got sick, and I had overtime at work, and I really meant to, but I put it in the car, and I forgot it was in the car. Gosh, I'm sorry. Don't wor no problem. Don't worry about it. When do you think you can see it for sure? For sure. Sometimes they'll say, yeah, maybe, I don't know, just, you know, get back to me. They're vague. Here's what you do when they're vague. Listen, I don't want to waste your time. I don't want to waste my time. Just give me a time that you'll, you will have for sure seen it. And I don't care what that, that day is. 
Whatever that works for you. Yeah, I'm still, uh, you know, listen. Let's just be pros here. Which way you want to, you know, either you're going to see it or you're not. If, you, if you're not going to see it, just say no, and then we can be done. No problem. So when do you think you'll see it for sure, for sure? They give you another date. So if I called you after that, you'll see it for sure, for sure, right? Yep. Same, same phone number, what time? All right, I got to go, bye. You reset the appointment and you're done. You keep moving. Okay? Questions and objections. But they tend to show up here. You, you ask somebody, you know, did it make sense? What did you like best? And they're like, ah, and then the, the objection starts to show up. If you, uh, if you have a history that maybe isn't as stellar as you'd hope it would be, and some of the people that you're contacting know that, your objections will show up a little earlier. Objections are natural, first of all. Prospects want to sound smart. The reason they bring them up is they want to sound intelligent. It has very little to do with the actual concern. You know, they just finished eating McDonald's, but they'll ask you, what are the ingredients in this product? <laughs> you know, they'll want to know. Do they really care? No, they're just, I need to say something to sound smart. Now, you can react either defensively or offensively, and both are wrong. If you act defensive, you know, well, hey, hey, these have been tested by everybody, and uh, that'll throw up red flags and it'll give them some cause for concern. If you act up offensively and you come charging right back at them, that'll be a problem too. Some people have these fancy little approaches. Is this one of those pyramid things? Oh, you mean pyramid? Like every corporation in the world? Is that what you mean? <laughs> this is this a Ponzi scheme? Oh, you mean like the US government? That kind of Ponzi scheme? Because <laughs> they heard that in some seminar, it sounded really cool. So they decide that they're gonna be offensive and just, you know, person says, you know, I'm not sure if I have the time. Oh, stop it. Are you watching television? Are you listening to the radio? You have all kinds of time. Show me your calendar. Knock it off. <laughs> you think I'm joking. Some of you with your, you know, so filled up with your ambition that you can't help yourself. Because you've convinced yourself, you know, everybody has time. You can't wait for the opportunity to pounce on them. So offensive is just as bad as defensive. What you need to do is act as a consultant. You're going to ask some questions. You're going to guide them. What would a consultant do if you were not going to be their upline? Okay? If they were going to join another company and they were asking some questions, how would you respond? You'd say, well, don't do it, he says. Don't do it. Come with my company. Um, no, how would you respond? You'd say, well, what are you looking for? Are you passionate about this? How could this help you? Is this really an objection for you? Really? You know, is it something that you think you can get past? How could you do it? You know, act as a consultant to help a person get a result. That's what the professionals do. Consultants aren't acting defensively because they're trying to help somebody get a result. They're not acting offensively because they're trying to help somebody get a result. That's it. The goal is education and understanding. That's the goal. It's not about getting them. So when the question, the objection comes up, just remember your goal. The goal is education and understanding. You're going to find all objections fall into just two categories. Two. Not 200, two. As far as I know. Maybe there's more, but I think there's two. The best approach is to, re to relate to them. When you say to somebody, listen, I know, I understand, I felt it, I can totally understand that, that makes sense, that sounds smart, I looked at that too, I evaluated that too, let me tell you what I learned, 
Let me tell you what I learned from other people. Let me tell you what I heard. Let me tell you what I experienced. Relating to them. Letting them know that they're not crazy, that they're smart, that they're intelligent, that asking questions is a good part to be a good way to understand something and fully get your arms around it. Some of you get so frazzled with the objection that you stop relating to people. And you start either being defensive or offensive. Understand? Got it? All right, let's talk about the two categories. Category number one. The prospect has limiting belief in their abilities. They don't think they could do it. They don't think they know anybody. They don't think they have the money. They don't think they have the time. They don't think something about themselves. They have a limiting belief in their own abilities to, to be successful. Category number one. Category number two, they have a limiting belief in network marketing. I don't think there's another category. There may be, but I don't think so. Give me an objection. Distrust? L limiting belief in network marketing. Give me another objection. It's a scam, network marketing. Don't have the money, number one. I got to talk to my wife, number one. Sorry? Believe in other people. Don't believe they, they can help get other people to do something, number one. don't believe in you, that really is tied to network marketing. It's not for them, number one. Not a salesperson, number one. Don't miss business and friendship, number two. Huh? Can't find people, number one. Lo you get that? I love network marketing, but your company is undercapitalized. <laughs> I've never gotten that one, but maybe you do. But that's going to be about network marketing again, right? I'm not, what's the, the basis of that question is, I'm afraid the company's not going to be around, so I'm afraid the network marketing companies disappear. Right? Number two. Anybody think of any others that don't fit? Yeah. I don't want to make money off other people. Number two, limiting belief about network marketing. Yeah. I'm satisfied in my current position. Number one, for sure. I mean, well, maybe both. Satisfied in my current position isn't a real objection, really. There's nobody that's completely satisfied. They're just throwing that out there to say, okay, what can I say? So they'll say, okay. Yes. Market saturated. Number two. Don't have time, number one. It's a scam, number two. Only people at the top make money, number two. My family, what? My family disown me, number two. Or number one, two, also. I don't need the money, baloney. <laughs> All right, we got it, right? We got it. There's more objections, but... There's only two categories. So you either have to help them with their limiting beliefs about their abilities or their limiting beliefs about network marketing. And in both cases, you're going to be asking some questions. You're going to be responding in a way with a goal of education and understanding, not about being smart, being right, sounding intelligent, being a big shot. You're acting as a consultant. That's what you do.